It was just a typical day. I don't even know where it came from. Believe this. I guess that CD made her see her own death. Just that. Just a few brief moments. But she thought it was real. She thought she was there in that dream. I gave the CD to a friend of mine. I think this thing could be dangerous. Maybe he wouldn't even let me touch it. Anyway, be careful. Man. All right, I'll take care of you. Listen, don't you worry your little heart off, okay? <laughs> man, that's funny. I mean, scary, real. It's worse than a horror movie. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my what the hell is going on? Oh, my that was that was that was really funny, man. It's like a it's like a simulation or something. Whew. <laughs> What if our friends saw this? <laughs> no. They'd pay to see this. No, man. 
what if they pay? A new virtual game. So if we can make copies of this, we can sell it. We can make thousands of dollars. We can sell it to the richest assholes in the world, make millions. I mean, I have connections in China. They can make copies of anonymous clean. I haven't met him since then. Talked with him a couple times on the phone, but he seemed too busy to talk. He said he was moving to Singapore. He said I don't need to worry about the disc anymore. So you know, I'm a DJ. I'm into this business, you know. I know what's good, man. I've been around for a long time. And like I told you, a good friend of mine got me into this. Like no one knows about it. What time? What's it about? This is this city. It's a game, a game of the century, a game to the future. This game will make you feel it's real. So how how much percentage do you want, man? As big as I can get. You do it. Yeah. You need to do this, man. Yeah. You into it? Yeah. It still sounds risky. Well, you know, reality is risky, man. That's my man. A silver disc the size of a CD. It has a golden inscription, Dream Drop. The radar image shows its exact position. We will send you the data. Yes, sir. You can't fail this. The phone rang. Emma. She's crying. She's screaming. Stuff I don't understand. I can't believe that, guys. I can't believe it. Guess what he's gonna do? It's my birth and guess where he's taking me? <laughs> oh, he's, he's taking me to the dinner. Hey, what a nice guy. Wow. <laughs> oh, I forgot my bag. Just hold this a minute, will you? I'll see you in a dead. An innocent woman wasn't supposed to be killed and have her picture end up on the front page of the newspaper. It was an accident. I said, do it clean. Woman was bad timing. Listen, I got done disc. Don't touch the disc! I'm not touching the bloody disc. We sent someone to retrieve it. It was just bad timing. <laughs> you begged me never to buy her any flowers. And I didn't buy her any flowers. Not even when they buried her. Not even when I visited her grave. But I'm sure it's not the flowers that killed her. I was just keeping my promise. 
I'll never see you smile again. I know this trauma will take a long time to heal, but there are things that can't be stopped. That CD that you mentioned, <laughs> it's not the CD that killed her. Things like that don't happen. It's not like that Japanese movie, that ring, that killing videotape. I know. It was just showing the future. Like dreams do sometimes. That's exactly how it works. It shows a fragment of the future. The future that is irreversible. You know so much about this. This feeling. Yes. Because as a psychiatrist, I deal with a lot of people who are in traumatic situations. But also, when I was a child, my parents died in a car crash. They were on the way to buy a bicycle for me. I know how it is when you lose your nearest and your dearest. But you've got to understand, the fault is not yours. It's not your fault. You are not to blame Nobody's guilty in this kind of situation. What you have to understand is that you are responsible for the rest of your life to live your life as best as you can. You are not guilty. Thank you, Doc. Thank you for contacting me. I've been thinking and thinking about this. What should I have done? What could I have done differently? Anyway, it's good to talk to someone about this. We're like brothers in pain. Here I am 20 years later with you. Listen, we can help each other out from now on, okay? Anytime you need help, just give me a call. That's why I started my volunteer psychiatric outpatient unit.